today is when we have the big reveal on the most recent Unstuck Church report. And I know we have a lot to talk about today, but let's first discuss some of the key changes for this quarter's report. Well, Amy, you know, we're always trying to make things better at the Unstuck Group. It's kind of, it's one of our values as a team. We're always trying to improve. We made some changes uh, going into this quarter to refresh how we're surveying people. So we, we updated the process because we wanted to make it more accessible to more churches. And it paid off because we had about three times as many churches participate in the last quarter. Um, it was over 300 churches that provided their information on all the questions that we're going to be processing in our conversation today. And of course, a lot more information in the full report. Um, and the benefit of that kind of push that we had was the data we're talking about today actually just comes from a six week period between late June and early August. So this is a very fresh snapshot of where churches are at this point. Tony, in the beginning of this quarter's report, you also included a word about attendance at churches. Why don't we start there? What did you learn as you were reviewing where churches stand at this point, Tony? Yeah, well, the good news is that church attendance, it's its actually growing again over the last 12 months. Yay. And, and that's new. I mean, that's really that's new good. compared to what we were seeing uh, earlier in the year when we were looking at data. Um, so uh, here's the bottom line. Average weekly attendance across all those churches that we surveyed increased from just under 500 people to close to 650 people each week. So it was about a 30% year over year increase. Um, digging a little deeper though, this is where we start to see some interesting differences between different size churches. As an example, churches over 1,000 people in attendance seem to be growing faster than smaller churches are right now. Um, both are experiencing attendance growth it's just that the larger churches seem to be growing a little bit faster now at this point. Um, we're also related to attendance. There's a year over year increase in kids attendance, which is pretty significant. That's up 43%. And Amy, wow. I, ha I have to think that, you know, maybe it's just parents getting more comfortable with mm -hmm. bringing their kids back to church because they're also back in school now. Maybe it has something to do with the vaccine being being approved for younger kids in our population. I don't know what the case is, but uh, it is good to see that young families are coming back to church or going to church uh, for the first time. And because of that, the kids' numbers are picking up. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, one of the surprises for me, though, looking at the attendance numbers, is that nearly 60% of churches that average 1,000 people or more um, they're now multi-site and I just didn't realize, I mean, I knew multi-site was taking off across the country mm -hmm. and, you know, we had a, a lot of questions, especially going through COVID. Is this the end of multi-site? Is this going to slow down <laughs> multi-site? And again, the data just continues to show, especially for larger churches. Now it's the more majority of large churches are in multiple locations. So I just, I just don't see that trend slowing down for us. Well, Tony, talk to us a little bit about engagement with online services then. Yeah, so this is fascinating. Um, and again, we're, the good news is people seem to be coming back or physical attendance seems to be growing. But at the same point, there continues to be a decline for churches when it comes to viewing online services. And here again, I admit trying to get apples to apples data is very difficult. And so what we're trying to do is ask churches to just tell us so that we can try to get comparable data. How many people are watching your services? And we're looking at one, one minute or more per week through the different platforms. And again, is that a win if someone just watches a service for one minute? <laughs> Absolutely not. No. But at the very least, what we're trying to do is watch for trends as far as engagement for with online services over time. And specifically what we saw in the data was online service views are were down from about 550 views per week a year ago to closer to five, uh, 425 views this summer. So that's it's more than a 20% drop. And 
Um, again, my hope, I know your hope, a lot of those people shifted their patterns from watching online to coming back to in person. But I mean, frankly, I just, it could be that people are just tired of being online. Um, mm -hmm. I know I am, I'm tired of Zoom meetings, <laughs> so maybe they are as well. Uh, but I mentioned in the report that it's, it's fascinating that there seems to be a correlation in the data between more online engagement and higher attendance at physical worship mm. gatherings. And I think most pastors want to believe that one of the reasons why people are not coming back to church is because many people are watching online. And I trust that there are people who are still only engaging online and probably many more that are doing a combination of both. But the data indicates higher online engagement and higher attendance, they actually go hand in hand. Mm. Uh, and we also saw that evidence, by the way, before the pandemic. So this is just confirming a pattern that we've seen over and over through the years. Well, Tony, we've included a lot more benchmarks related to ministry reach in this new report. So let's turn our attention to ministry connection. What did you learn about the next steps people are taking beyond attending the weekend service? Well, the biggest surprise was the number of churches that have now embraced home groups. And again, I, I just felt in my gut that we were continuing to see this trend through the years, but now we're at the point where nine out of 10 churches offer home groups as an option for connecting with other people. Um, and six out of 10 churches, by the way, only offer home groups. So no Sunday school options as an example. I mean, they're just fully invested in providing home group options uh, for the people in their church. Um, and then what we're seeing then with that kind of commitment to that model is that 62% of adults and students are connected to some form of smaller group. Um, that's a little bit down from what we saw last quarter. I think it was closer to 70% last quarter. Um, and um, that's actually down from what the churches um, indicated from their data that they were experiencing a year ago as well. Uh, but this is one of those benchmarks that it's, again, based on in-person attendance. So because of that, it's not a surprise that this number has started to come down because mm -hmm. more people are attending services. And so a little bit less percentage are of that in-person attendance is connected to a group. Still, I'm mildly surprised that so many people remain connected in smaller groups really throughout the pandemic um, because um, we just continue to see throughout those months, I mean, just high levels of small group engagement. Mm -hmm. But it does appear that we're starting to normalize now as far as this uh, small group data and that we're getting closer to that 60% average that we saw before the pandemic. And, and that's good news, right, when it comes yeah. to ministry connection, those numbers. But uh, the numbers for volunteer engagement don't look as positive, do they? Yeah, unfortunately, they don't. And so, uh, again, all those churches provided their data on what they're seeing as far as trends with volunteer engagement. And what they reported is that uh, it's a little bit less than 40. I, uh, I think it was 37% of their adults and students are serving at least once a month. And that is a slight decrease from what we were seeing even last summer, summer of 2021. Um, and Amy, you know this to be true, it's well below the average we would have seen before the pandemic, where mm -hmm. we would typically see on average 45 to 50% of adults or students uh, serving someplace in the church on a monthly basis. Um, so, um, uh, this again, yeah, you're right. This this is not positive. What's maybe even more concerning is we're also seeing fewer volunteer leaders. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I shared this in the report that that lack of volunteer leaders may be it may be the most alarming number related to connections because every quarter we ask churches to share how many adults and students are in roles where they're responsible for either leading a team or leading a group of other people. In other words, we're talking about team leaders and group leaders. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's some confusion of what does a leader mean? Well, in our <laughs> case, we define it as someone that's actually leading a team or leading a group. And based on the data reported, it looks like churches have a span of care of one volunteer leader for every 14 people in attendance. What, we're, what we know from the past, um, we have found that healthy, growing churches 
tend to have one volunteer leader for every 10 people in attendance. And it's not unusual for the healthiest of churches to have closer to one leader for every five people in attendance. But on the other hand, we also know from past research that declining churches typically have about half the volunteer leaders of healthy churches. So they're closer to one leader for every 20 people in attendance. And Amy, I, I really view this benchmark of volunteers leading teams and groups is kind of one of those critical lead indicators of overall church health and church growth. And that's why this fra fresh data is uh, really so concerning to me at this point uh, for churches across the board. Tony, for today, let's wrap up today's conversation by talking about ministry staffing and finances. Again, there's, there's way too much data in the full report to go through everything in today's conversation, but could you share some of the items that stood out to you? Yeah, let's begin with the giving side of that. I mean, because typically that's where pastors have the most questions, just to be mm -hmm. honest. Um, they are genu genuinely wanting to hear what other churches are experiencing related to giving patterns. And on the surface, things look promising when it comes to giving, but I want to share why I think we need to be a little bit more realistic about what the current data shows us. Again, looking at the year-over-year -year data from more than 300 churches uh, that shared their financial information in recent weeks, these churches indicated that their general giving has increased by 6% from the same period last year. And that's encouraging. Yeah, that sounds promising, but I did, I did pick up on the realism. Uh, by the way, notice <laughs> I didn't say pessimism about ah. the giving data, so what's yeah, that? Thank you, thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, uh -huh. you have to remember that this data on giving includes a number of months before the recent economic downturn. And it will be interesting to see, I think, if the inflationary pressure on the economy will impact financial contributions in the months to come. And it's just going to be interesting to monitor the trends in the coming quarters. But I can tell you that I've talked with a number of pastors in recent weeks who have said they're starting to see giving plateau or even some declines. Amy, I know many pastors don't want to hear this, but I think it's time to embrace our current reality. Um, this is the new baseline for attendance. If you want to see attendance grow, it's not going to come from people coming back to church. You're going to have to reach new people, and this is our new baseline for giving. If you want to see giving grow, it's not going to be from people who were financially supporting the ministry returning to their old giving patterns. You're going to have to reach new people. You're going to have to help them take steps towards Jesus. You're going to have to encourage them to embrace generosity and biblical stewardship principles. There really just aren't any shortcuts left at this point. We're going to have to get more intentional, not just about how we increase attendance. We also have to get more intentional about how we help people uh, increase their generosity as well. Mm -hmm.